Hi, I'm Kane, and this is a series where I review everything I watched this month all in one take. It was July 2021, and this month I watched Garfield. What a way to start off the month. I can't say it's good, but it's okay. Bill Murray is phoning it in so much that it's hilarious. It's just nothing to write home about, though. Early 2000 CGI just hasn't aged that well. 4 out of 10. The same night I watched Oh Hello on, on Broadway on Netflix, which made for a puzzling double feature, but I think it's so good. Consistently hilarious with great performances from Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. A lot of the humour was really New York based, which as a person from regional Australia was completely lost on me. Really original concept though, and I wish I saw it live. 8 out of 10. Django Unchained was an interesting watch. I was enthralled by the characters and the world that Tarantino created, but the violence is just a tad too much for me. I get why people like this movie, it's very cathartic at times, but it's just not my jam. Great filmmaking on display though, so like a 6 out of 10. I rewatched La La Land for like the third time now and I still love it. The music is such a standout, Mia and Sebastian themes breaks my heart so much when I hear it. Another Day of Sun is just this wonderful opener, 9 out of 10. School of Rock is such a solid movie, it has a great premise and great writing, and it's not breaking any boundaries, but on pretty much every level it succeeds. Great performances, Jack Black was meant for this role, some jokes haven't aged too well though, but for the most part it's pretty good. 9 out of 10. Loki came to an end in July and I loved it. I think it's the best TV series Marvel has released because it's pushing the narrative of the MCU into an interesting place. There's only so much spy and espionage type Marvel stuff that I can handle. The introduction of Kang is great and I can't wait to see that character play out. I'm so happy that there's going to be a season 2. 7 out of 10. The Dead Don't Die is definitely dry. Why'd I even write that? The movie is definitely slow and the humour is just so dry. That being said, I loved it, but I need to be in the right mood to really appreciate it. The slow pacing felt annoying at some parts and the social commentary felt surface level, but I still liked it. Like a 7 out of 10. Johnny Mnemonic is one of the best bad movies I have ever seen. It fails on every level, a convoluted script with terrible dialogue, the set design and CG scenes are horrible, and the acting is almost always horrendous, but somehow the film overcomes it all and becomes a genuinely entertaining experience. I feel like with a little more effort, this movie could have been so much better. 6 out of 10. The Darjeeling Limited, like any Wes Anderson movie, is well written and shot, but this one feels a little boring. The middle drags the film down a little bit, and but by the end it finds a rhythm, which is cool. The story of brothers slowly learning to love each other is very wholesome. Disney Plus says this is a comedy, but I almost cried, so I don't know about that. 7 out of 10. The Mulan 2020 was okay. I want to preface by saying that... I haven't watched the original, so I really don't have any context for this movie. It was fairly solid, good action, and good enough story, just way too long, and the editing is distracting. The original must be better, 5 out of 10. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou I feel like is the best Wes Anderson film, at least out of the, out of the ones I've watched so far. It takes the best parts of Anderson's aesthetic, a wonderfully dry performance, beautiful composition, unique storytelling and some of that stop motion sort of stuff. I feel like his recent work is almost too clinical. This film sort of hits the sweet spot for me. 10 out of 10. Little Shop of Horrors is right up my alley. It's a black comedy and a musical which is consistently funny and has wonderfully composed music. You can definitely tell that it was adapted from the theatre pretty closely. A lot of the jokes feel like they need to pause for laughs, but that's not a bad thing. I love the musical theatre aesthetic. 9 out of 10. The World's End, I feel like, is probably the worst Edgar Wright movie. I mean, all of his films are pretty spectacular, but this one just feels like the weakest. I love the emotional story of this film, but it doesn't run as deep as Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz, but it was alright. <laughs> 7 out of 10. The Fantastic Mr. Fox is a tad overhyped for me. It might just be overloaded on Wes Anderson this month, but his style just feels a little annoying. I can tell it's a great movie and I was entertained by it, it's just not what I like to see in a film. 7 out of 10. The Howling is a werewolf movie from the early 80s, and it wasn't too bad. The campy elements are the most interesting part of the movie. All of the serious stuff kind of falls flat, and I think I blame that on the music. It's so aggressively 80s that it takes you out of the film. 5 out of 10. The last movie I watched this month was Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes, and I loved it to pieces. Both leads have so much chemistry together that it sells the movie for me. Everything is really over the top and it just fits the tone of the movie perfectly. 7 out of 10. And that's July done. Before I want to go, I want to say that I have a podcast. Friend of the show, Luna and I started one a while back, so if you want to hear me talk more, it'll be linked in the description. It's called Three Friends Playing in a Circle, by the way. You'll get it if you've watched the first episode. <laughs> I also want to thank my patrons who are on screen right now with a special thank you to my mom and Trinity Rose. And if you'd like to join them, head on over to patreon.com forward slash kmidge to see some exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. Also, finally, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and watch all of my stuff. See you later.
Peace out.